All right, YouTube, a lot of stuff going on today. I Stay tuned until the end. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of why we're doing a different video today. And then as well, we have uh, some current events that just now happened going on in our world. I'll give you my thoughts and how Kelly and I are being prepared for it. But before we get into all of the current events and why we're doing a different video, I'm gonna have these rapid fire questions, homesteading questions. I just went through all of our channel and so let's get into it now. What does abandoned land mean? For me, honestly, abandoned land, it just means someone bought the land and then they didn't do anything to it for many years. What that means to me is if you ended up having just raw land like prairie land where you don't have any kind of barbed wire fencing, no perimeter fencing, then that allows grazing animals to come in and out of. But whenever you have land that was purchased with perimeter fencing, that doesn't allow grazing animals to come onto, it doesn't allow any predators to uh, move those grazing animals. And so that land actually turns into either a forest or a desert. That's abandoned land. That's my definition of it. It might be different for you. For you, it might be something that like squatter's rights or anything like that, which, which makes no sense to me, and it should make no sense to you either. That whole squatter's rights thing, that's not like illegal land. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying abandoned land, somebody bought the land and then they moved away, or they never did anything to that raw land, and it degraded. You lost value because they didn't manage it. If you're not using animals to manage your land, then you have to do it. If you're not using God's, the way that God designed the earth to manage land, then that means that you have to do it. Okay, what are the exterior dimensions of our shed to house? Uh, we have a link. I think it's bettertogetherhomestead.com slash shed. You can get the full uh, printouts of that, but our house is 16 by 48 and then we have a 12 by 48 front porch and a 10 by 48 back porch those are the dimensions someone says with trees seems impossible with trees seems impossible so many large properties are just meadows my husband says we can always just plant the trees is this real a realistic option or do we have to have trees or having trees break it all. I think what they're saying is like that ha buying a piece of property with trees, mature trees, is more expensive. Absolutely. Buying a property with mature trees is more expensive than buying just a flat piece of dirt, maybe some grass. Trees have value. Trees have many values. It has lumber values. It has shade values. It has windbreak values. It just has beauty value. I am a tree lover. I'm a tree hugger in that sense. I guess so. I love trees. You don't really, you see all the trees behind me there, but uh, we have, you know, hundred, you know, plus year oak trees, very mature. You know, I don't know how old these oak trees are. They might be a couple of hundred years old. It's fantastic. We have big cedars. We have established trees. We almost live in a forest. I like that. If I need to cut a tree down, I can do that. But I cannot plant a 100 year old tree. That's what I wanted. If you don't have the budget to buy something like that, yes, you can plant a tree. The best time to plant a tree was yesterday. No, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The next best time was yesterday. The next best time is today. So plant some trees. Do you plan, this is about our shed to house, do you plan to keep kids in a loft together as they grow up through puberty? It's a very personal question to answer that question. Um, it kind of has to do a little bit about the whole World War III thing, possibility. Um, no, we never plan on being in this house, which is right over there, uh, for as long as we are. We actually didn't plan on enjoying living on this property for as long as we have. We're doing our best to be able to put out a video every single week to be able to uh, make money with the viewpoint and the focus of our family staying together. It'd be a lot easier if I decided to just 
go get a job uh, and, and be and not see my family for 40 plus hours a week. That's not what we want to do. That's not what we, my family has talked about it. We've talked about it with our 13 year old son who's taller than me now. And to say like, hey man, do you want me? We can break ground next week. I can get a job, we can get a mortgage. Uh, we might have to get rid of the cows. We might have to do a lot of different things. Do you want me to do that so that I can start building a bigger house so that you can have more room? And he says, no, dad, I don't want that. I wanna see you every single day. I want you to work from here. What can I do to be able to help? I'm like, fantastic. Let's go muck together. Let's go uh, clear land together. We're trying to do a lot of things, especially with what's going on in the world. We're ramping things up even more. Okay. Um, but I've also never tried raw milk. Is it easier or the same on your diet? Oh, this is someone who's saying, I guess they're lactose intolerant, but they've never tried raw milk does raw milk, um, is it easier on the, the digestion? I would say it depends. Uh, definitely A2A2 is better than uh, not. That's supposedly easier to digest for a wider range of people. Our cow is not A2A2, we wish she was. Um, she's like an A2A1, which just means she has a higher cream content. So I just now skimmed some cream for my coffee and um, we're trying to get another cow that was, that is A2A2. Our calf beforehand, Buttercup was A2A2, but she, uh, she had some attitude issues and we had the little babies around, so it wasn't safe. And then Pumpkin, that didn't make it. She got pneumonia and I had to put her down. Man, that thing hurts every time I talk about that calf. That was A2A2. That really hurt. Uh, we, she was, we were planning on her being our future milk cow. Got to start over again. We love Goldie so much. She gives us everything. And so, um, just working that out. Okay. Um, can you give the names of the fodder trees? Absolutely. So fodder just means like a little additional extra, uh, so, you know, a little, uh, extra feed. Uh, and that's the definition of fodder, like just a little bit extra. Uh, for fodder trees, it's extra uh, supplements, extra things that your cows can eat throughout the time, throughout the years. And so for us, it's like high protein leaves and twigs and stuff. So uh, the we go from white mulberry is the highest protein, and then I think it is the hybrid willow, and then hybrid willow, and then hybrid poplar. I think they're pretty much tied. So white mulberry, hybrid poplar, hybrid willow. And then also have comfrey. So those are the trees that, that we use. Uh, and then other fodder that we use to feed Goldie are things like comfrey, banana leaves. That's kind of like a tree. Uh, we had to take them down for the garden, but banana leaves, they'll eat that. And then we also have, I think it's called Ruelia. Ruelia, we got those from uh, our rabbit mentor. Whenever we had rabbits, she brought a whole bunch of stuff up. Uh, they also really like passion flower leaves. They like, I think they like loofah leaves. They'll eat a lot of stuff. But you don't want to, you want to not like overdo it. But those fo those three fodder trees, man, they'll they'll eat. That's just straight tree hay. They'll love that. So I would start with those uh, sweet potatoes. Oh my goodness, they'll eat all the sweet potato leaves for like a ton. So we're trying to grow sweet potatoes everywhere for ground cover. How do you find out if there are any restrictions on land? So, you gotta read the paperwork, one, before you buy it. For two, you gotta get a good realtor. Everybody asks, do you, like, give, can you have, can you give us names for a, real, for a good realtor? I'm trying to figure that out. I'm a little selfish in terms of that, mainly because if I tell you my realtor, then I'm basically telling you where I live and I'm a little bit private in that sense. I have you know, kids, so I don't really want to give all that information out. But I will say this, if you wanna email us and we get to know you, then maybe I'll share, you, share with you our realtor. Um, but beyond that, you, it, it's not give a, if you give a friend a fish, if you teach a man to fish, 
uh, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he'll uh, eat for a lifetime. So I'd rather just tell you the skill on how to find a good realtor. The skill that you find a good realtor is that you search, you do the work, you drive around, you, you find the location that you want, you drive around, and you look for what you want to have. You, you put your mindset in the realtor of who you want to be. Meaning, if you, so you're not going, so the realtor that you're gonna have in suburbia is not gonna be the realtor that you want buying unrestricted raw land, recreational land. Your, our realtor, his, it was on, I found him on lands.com or landsoftexas.com. And his, uh, his profile photo was him holding up a buck that he just shot. And I'm like, that's my guy right there. There was a bunch of photos of these uh, blue haired ladies, probably sweet ladies, high heels and stuff, like their hair all did and everything. Absolutely not. No. If there's a friend at your church, absolutely not. They are not the realtor for you. Uh, we have friends. I don't want to talk bad about them on the channel, but I told them many times they need to get a new realtor. Uh, we went and looking for land. Uh, this is before we bought this land, or maybe we were under contract with this land. And we went to go look at some other raw land with them, and it was very wooded. It was kind of hard to get into. And all of us like got our boots on and everything, and she showed up all fancy pants, and she wouldn't, she barely got out of her car. She was like, nope, I'm not going in there. No way, I'm not doing that. Y'all go look at it. I'm good, I'll stay out here. Man, our realtor threw Ollie on his back and started going through the brush, through all the thistles and the poison ivy and everything with us. Our realtor loves this stuff. He lives this. So you have to find a good realtor like that. Drive around and if you see a realtor sign on a lot of pieces of land, call them, interview them. Find out if they're the, your guy. In terms of unrestricted raw land, basically in the paperwork, if it says any restrictions, then it's restricted. If it doesn't say any restrictions, then it's there's no restrictions. It's not going to say on the paperwork, this land is unrestricted. Um, also, you want to find the county and you want to call the county and you want to ask, hey, uh, are there any building codes in your county? So there we go. That was a long one. Uh, why the editorial with the t-shirts? Uh, these are our t-shirts, grow gardens, not government. If you have to ask why I, we wear t-shirts that say grow gardens and not government, then you don't get it. And I'm not going to go over that. If you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. And I'm not doing that. Uh, if you like these shirts, grow gardens, not government, we have links down below. Uh, what but what do you use as a search engine or app for finding land? I like Lands of Texas, or I think Lands of America. There might even be like Lands of Mississippi, Lands of something.com. There might be all those things. Um, if you're looking for Texas, Lands of Texas. How's the meat after the chicken plucker versus hand plucking? Uh, I've never hand plucked a chicken, so I do not know. So uh, I would assume that the meat is the exact same. So if you're thinking, if you're, if you're real, I, I believe your real question is, does the chicken plucker ruin the meat whenever you're processing meat birds? No, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't do anything. Any builder recommendations for Washington State? Only thing I can say is go to our Facebook group, uh, Shed to House, or like just, it's Shed to House on Facebook. Uh, there's over a hundred thousand something, uh, members there. Someone probably lives in your state and can be able to try to help you a little bit. Uh, that's the only thing I can do. Uh, I, I'm familiar with Texas, Mississippi, and the surrounding states because we represent United Portable Buildings, uh, because of, they're absolutely the best, uh, that there is, uh, United Portable Buildings. Their link is down below. You can build your own 3D shed to house there. Um, and it's fantastic, but yet I'm only familiar with the southern states. How do you have rabbits and other animals to have as meat without becoming attached emotionally? Meaning, so we just now killed 
uh, our very, we just now processed our, sorry, that came out wrong. We just now processed our very first uh, pig here on the property. So we uh, processed Missy, our sow. I know that that sounds weird, but at the time of us, she's had three litters and we just, uh, we weren't really always happy with with all of the breeding uh, that, that she came up with, meaning she did not produce as many breeders as we wanted. Like it was very clear for some reason she would have very small litters and those litters would be super uh, spread out. We could definitely tell that there were some breeders that were good and then the rest of them were not very good and they just weren't meaty. Um, and just over time, she wouldn't put on weight. She was just very thin, even after taking the piglets off of her. And so uh, we knew we couldn't sell her as meat. We couldn't sell her as a breeder. So it was just, and we weren't going to breed her anymore. So we're not going to keep her as a pet. We needed uh, meat in the freezer. So we processed Missy. Um, it's not easy. I'll say that. I would start small. You know, if you start with things like rabbits, it's kind of hard because rabbits are very cute and cuddly. Of course, once they get bigger, they'll scratch you like crazy and they're no longer bunnies. But it gets easier. If you do, I think probably the easiest is uh, Cornish cross uh, meat birds because they get ugly once they get older. And so it's not like you want to kill something just because it's not cute and cuddly anymore. But it does make it slightly easier. The thing is, is you just know that they're gonna put food on your table. You have to do the whole process. I would not ever suggest taking the life of an animal and then not doing any, anything with it. That's horrible, that's really bad. But if you take the life of the animal, then you process it uh, humanely. You take the life just like that, you process it humanely, um, and then you get the meat back. Another way to do it is you can really see both sides is if you raise a pig or some chickens or something, you could take it to a butcher, uh, like a processor, and you can see the full process of that and you can see the pros and cons. We have taken one, two, three. So we've taken five, like eight animals to a processor uh, so far. And I see the stress of the animal by loading them in the trailer, stressing them out, and then that being their last day. Missy, the, the pig that we just now processed, she had no bad day, zero, like not even a bad moment. We did all the research, we, and we're gonna tell the full story. Um, we, we had a lot of learning experience with that. And her head was down, drinking full fat milk. We didn't even skim the milk, like she got everything. She was just sitting there drinking full fat milk because uh, what we learned from Farmstead Meatsmith is that a pig will only stop their head movement in three ways, which is um, when they are sleeping, when they're peeing, and when they're drinking. Besides that, their head never stops moving. So we gave her a big bowl of milk and she just started drinking it and her head was down, didn't even see me, and then that was it. She went from the happiest moment of her life to being gone, didn't feel one pain at all. And that made me feel good. That even though she didn't fit on the farm anymore, she gave us some piglets, um, but she, we grew out of her and to not want to breed her anymore. But we honored her life by not giving her any pain. First is if I loaded her in the trailer, I would have to remove feed from her for the whole night before. I would stress her out, I would drive, and then I would have to get her out of the trailer and then they would, she would be in some different environment on concrete. It would have been very stressful to that animal. So that's how you not get emotionally attached is you are emotionally attached and you want to honor the animal and do it humanely. Uh, how do you, how many birds do you have in your stock tank would 10 hold up to six weeks? So she, they're talking about, uh, we have a video about our how we brood chicks. Um, I would say six weeks is kind of long. Six weeks is a long time to have um, chickens in a brooder. 
I think we try now we're also depends on your brooder. We're also down here in Texas, so it's you know, it's middle of April and um and I'm sweating outside here because it's 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 already hot. It depends on your, your environment. We're able to get the animals outside a lot faster because it's warmer here. But I would say I would do probably close to 15 or 20 in a stock tank for maybe two or three weeks. Once they start flying around, in my opinion, you need to get them out anyway, depending on your climate. So that's a tough one. It really depends on your, your weather and your climate because if it's going to like get really cold, you don't want them outside overnight. So that's a tough one. Do you guys have a shareable blueprint of your house? Yeah, I just now talked about that. BetterTogetherHomestead.com slash shed. I think that's it. What's the best website or realtor references for buying land close to Austin? Same thing, Austin, Texas. Same thing I said. Uh, I, I would say lands of Texas. That would be it. Uh, and then trying to find a good realtor as well. Uh, I know that that's a hard one to say, but it's really a skill. It's the same thing as like someone, I did a, once a video of how to buy land with, with no money. And it, I use it as a teaching moment is if you don't have money, the first step you need to, to do in, is to learn how to get money. And a lot of people don't understand that. They have a victim mentality. They don't, they don't like to have to learn how to make money. They just want to get money. They, they heard if you don't have money, step one is to get money. No, that's not what I said. If you don't have money, the first thing you need to do is to learn. Learn how to make money, and that costs nothing. Watch YouTube, it's for free. You don't have to go to college or anything for that, it's totally free. So if you don't have a good realtor, you need to learn how to find a realtor. You don't have to buy land, you start working on the skill to get the land. Do you, okay, uh, can you please tell me where I can find the free ebooks mentioned above? Yes, um, getoffyourtail.com, but I don't know if that takes it to, I'll put a link down below for our, it's called 50 Homestead Moneymakers that they're talking about. It's a free uh, guide, uh, 50 Homestead Moneymakers, link down below. If I don't have the link down below um, whenever I do this, because I'll tell you why I'm having to do this video like this, Remind me, I'll put it in there. Uh, so yeah. Tree lot, lots cost upwards of $40,000 or more for one acre. What if I found a lot with some trees, not many, but a few large ones on the back line, <clears throat> and then you plant a ton more? Sure, absolutely. That's the same thing, we already talked about that. Uh, yes, you can plant trees, but Sorry, I would say that it's you're never going to get this ever, ever. Your, your grandkids, your your kids might not even get this. Your grandkids would. Um, so, hey, that's the sign of a wise man. Every every man should plant a tree whose shade he will never sit under. So I agree with that. I want I do that. I plant trees with the knowledge that I will never sit under that tree. I will, the tree will outlast me and it will never get big enough for my life to be able to enjoy the shade. So you're just going to have to know that. Or you can just buy land that already has the mature trees and then you're already 100 years ahead of it. So if you're thinking of it that way, I feel like the price is correct. But then again, we bought our land in 2015. We had the blood I'll tell you more about it at the end of the video. So much is going on. Like it literally last night, it's about Iran and yeah, it's about World War III. I'm gonna talk about it. So, uh, gosh, this is weird. What do you guys do for a living other than farming? So farming is actually very little of our income because um, we're still building everything. We're still spending money to be able to grow the farm. But I think probably this year we might be able to start having some farmer's markets for stuff. So um, what do we do for a living? So we have our, our main income, of course, is YouTube. Um, that, that's where the bulk of our income comes from. 
Uh, and it's, you know, I'm going to be for- perfectly honest. Like, it's tough. YouTube's tough these days. There's a lot of competition, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people doing clickbait, you know, that have been talking about World War III for the last year or ever since the last election they were talking about. They've been talking about it for the last two elections of that when World War III was going to happen for a long time, but definitely like that. Um, and this is the first time I've ever mentioned it because I really believe that it's something is happening. I really, truly believe that it's it's all there, that it's time to be able to know it. So um, YouTube, the way that we got here to our property, uh, we have a an essential oil company uh, that, you know, business that we run with doTERRA essential oils. Uh, we don't talk about it here on the channel a lot. Uh, we're currently not running the business because Kelly is being a full-time mom and helping me with YouTube. Um, so, but we do have that business and we still love it. Like we still, you know, I used the oils on my little girl last night cause she had a tummy ache. So we still really believe in having oils for preparedness. And um, then we have sponsors, you know, we're affiliates with uh, United Portable Buildings. They sponsor our Shed to House Facebook group. So we have sponsors. We also work with other sponsors, uh, you know, Vigo Gardens, uh, AG1, a lot of those brands that we truly believe are good brands. Uh, Chick List, we love all those brands. And uh, so yeah, we, that, that's how we do it. We have, and then we have our course, we have our ebook. Uh, so we're online content creators. That's how we make our money. Where are we? Main house, or there are two houses. So I guess the video, we talked about the main house, our main house, uh, main shed to house. Then we have our studio, which is a 14 by 24 little mini shed to house. Would a cement slab be a good idea for a shed to house? Absolutely. I think that would be a fantastic idea. Put a shed on a slab, and then if you ever need to move that shed, then you already have a slab there that you can work off of and you can extend. Fantastic idea. If I would have known what I know now, I would have done it that way. That would have been a great idea. Where's your washer and dryer in our shed to house? It's on our back porch, which is our 10 by 48 back porch. So we kind of have like an outdoor laundry room. Um, our washer for the first time ever broke this winter. Um, I didn't run it overnight and a piece of the little, the, where, where the washing machine goes into the, the cold water hose, that little plastic threaded part that cracked, unfortunately. So it broke for the first time. Um, so it might not work up North, an outdoor laundry room. That's up to you. Adrenal cocktail. Is there a video? We talk about adrenal cocktails, uh, basically. Long story short, uh, we have coconut water that we just get at Costco. And then uh, we put a little bit of orange juice in it with some salt. That's an adrenal cocktail right there. We go a step above it and doTERRA has this little powder stuff. It's called MetaPower. We like it. I'm not trying to sell it, but it, it gives us a little bit more energy kick and it just tastes good. I like it that. Um, I also like the AG1. No joke. You know, we take it first thing in the morning before our coffee, and I feel like my aches and pains have been a lot better. So, I like that. Uh, Don't trade in your health for pigs. Follow biblical food laws. That's up to you. Uh, Put down in the comments below of what you think about that. Uh, I think that Jesus saved us. So, I'll leave that up to you. Running out of card here. Does fermenting uh, feed for chickens work? Absolutely. It works the same for any animal. Ferment your feed. How, what do you do about freezing weather? Won't the PVC pipes crack? Yes. If you are up north and you're doing uh, rainwater harvesting, yes, your PVC pipes will crack if there is water in them. These PVC pipes don't have water. so But actually, they have had water and they have cracked. So yeah, you'll have to do better up north depending on your climate. We're in Texas. Uh, Ever find out what ate the chickens? No, never did. I think it was probably a raccoon. Do you have a video that shows details on your kitchen island? No, but I think I would like to do that probably over on our Shed to House YouTube channel. How many mini splits do you install in in our home to heat and cool? So for we, 
for us, for we, for us, we have four. We have one in each bedroom and then we have one in our main living space. I probably would have done it bigger in the main living space if I had to do it over again. Okay, so uh, real quick, what's going on right now? Um, for one, Kelly is out in uh, North Carolina for Meg Holler's baby shower. So a group of those uh, ladies get together for every time they have a baby and uh, sometimes in between there. Uh, Kelly hasn't been up to North Carolina since Georgia was born. She was up there for Georgia's baby shower. Uh, those ladies have just gotten really close to each other, uh, really good friends, and that's fantastic. She's spending, t she's staying a couple of nights with Jess uh, over at Roots and Refuge, and then uh, Breeze. Uh, it's it's just great. So she's having a blast. I'm getting all the fo I'm getting all the videos and photos. She's going to do a full video whenever she gets back about that. That's why I'm doing this video because I'm home alone with the five kids and I don't have a lot of time to be able to do this. But last night, before I went to bed, I was I got Georgia to bed and I was scrolling on my phone and I saw that Iran has did drone strikes to Israel. So you guys, I don't, all I know, I'll say this, I, I'll give you my opinion, you can read into it whatever you want. We are supporting Ukraine. I don't want to get political, this is, but, but it's going to. We're supporting Ukraine against Russia. So we're in, in a proxy war with Russia uh, because we're supporting Ukraine. Financially, we are supporting Israel now against Hamas and then also now Iran. Uh, and I'm again, I don't know. I mean, I know that, that was a mistake that Israel bombed Iran. Uh, evidently, it was a, it was an accident, but still, that that is what it is. Um, that's going to happen. And Russia has already publicly stated that they will support Iran. <laughs> so. We're in two different wars there. We're in a cold war with China. And two weeks ago, whenever the eclipse was coming, and I don't even want to talk about that, but my brain goes to here. The reason why we bought this property was because uh, in 2015, there was a thing called the blood moons. I thought Jesus was coming back, y'all. Um, I, I, I was wrong in that sense, but I was... Five years early before I realized like what actually will happen with 2020. I'm super glad that that blood moons came and that I forced the issue to buy this property and get my family moved here in 2018. We were more established by then whenever 2020 hit. So it was about two weeks ago, Kelly and I late night was sitting on the couch and I said, hey, what would you like to happen in our life and on our property if, um, if World War III were to ever happen, what would you want to be ahead of the game for World War III? And here's our list, you guys. I'm just gonna tell you straight up, this is our list of what we want to be able to be prepared for World War III. Uh, we have a generator, a really nice champion generator that uh, needs to be fixed. Uh, all my buddies, uh, Patrick Rohrman, uh, MT Nice, uh, Daniel, and then Josh over at uh, RV Near and Far. I'm, I'm, fr I'm buddies with them. They're going to make fun of me for sure. But I need to get my generator fixed. I left gas in there, and that's an easy one, but I need to get my generator fixed. Uh, that's step one. We need to get some uh, extra fencing on the front part of our property. We need to get that fixed. Uh, mainly so that we can rotate Goldie up there, but just it just needs to get fixed. And that needs to be done. Uh, we need more perennials. I even saw a video from Kelly uh, over at Jess's, and Jess is over there cutting asparagus. We need to have way more perennials planted in our garden and all around uh, our zone one and beyond uh, for, for this. Like I even sweet, in my opinion, sweet potatoes are a very good perennial because you're probably gonna leave some roots under there uh, comfrey is great. All of these trees, these are perennials. That is a that is key. If a war's coming, 
you need a lot of perennials because they come back every single year. Uh, outdoor cooking. You guys, I have my, my parents, I'm going to do videos on that. Uh, we, they, they had this old uh, pizza oven, uh, Uli, I don't know, but they never used it. They bought it, you know, maybe 10 years ago and whenever that company first came out. And they said, we make sourdough pizza all the time. And they said, hey, would you ever use this? We cooked it with all of our natural wood here in our forest. Like here in our land, like just fallen wood, we cooked sourdough pizza. I've cooked like seven pizzas last night. And it was fantastic, so delicious. Outdoor cooking, we want more outdoor cooking, uh, ways that we can cook with wood and not have to rely on propane. Uh, Kelly knowing how to shoot, that is one. Kelly wants to be more proficient on shooting firearms. Deal, I want, um, I want that as well, and I also want uh, my kids to know how to do that more. Ollie and like Ollie and Everett and, and even Ella and the little kids to be able to be more proficient in shooting firearms, starting with like a BB gun and stuff like that and growing up. I mean, working up. Uh, more pocket ponds. We want more pocket ponds everywhere to be able to hold as much water as we can here on our property. Butcher our first pig. That was the list two weeks ago. We've done that. That is great. Physical fitness for Bo and Kelly. You guys, uh, yeah, we have been struggling with our physical fitness, we're trying to take better care of ourselves. We're uh, in our 40s now, and, and that is something that we need to do. We need to get more physically fit. Water filtration for our, that's all the free stuff. That's stuff that's a piece of cake, easy to do. Let's do the things that will cost a little bit of money. Water filtration for our rain tanks. We gotta do that. It's gonna cost a lot of money, Kelly has even said she's totally fine not building a bigger house, but something that she would want if, if the you-know-what hits the fan, she wants uh, filtration for our rain tanks. She wants more rain tanks. She wants solar panels and then also to have some sort of barn or shop. Man, the, the sun is like getting crazy right now. So, a barn. That is our list of what we're trying to get ready for if World War III does happen. Put in the comments below if you think that I'm overreacting. Please call me out, let me know. Do you think that that is legit? Do you think that this could lead to World War III? Because whenever we're studying this in school, you don't really know that you're in World War III. Like, World War III didn't start World War II didn't start with Pearl Harbor, right? But that's whenever you ever that's whenever America was officially in it. But there was so many years, so many events that happened way before then. Are we in those early events? Put it in the comments below. Let me know. I would like to be educated in that. If you're more educated, I'm not a historian. But I do know this. I feel I feel like the sh is getting real, man. And I feel like I feel like something's happening. So I'm trying to get ready for it. Let me know if you're trying to get ready for it. Let me know the holes that you have. Let me know your list. Things that you're trying to do to, to possibly get ready. Um, if this is it. I have no clue. I'm trying. To, I'm, I'm wanting to remind myself to be anxious for nothing, and in all things, give joy and peace to the Lord. That is not perfect scripture, but I'm trying to have be anxious for nothing, and trying to have joy. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to pray like it all depends on God, and I'm trying. I'm trying to work like it all depends on me, and pray like it all depends on God. That's a Dave Ramsey one-liner. So that's where I am. I got to go take care of five kids. I am on day four of being a single dad with Kelly being out of town with five kids. I got probably, I think I have three more days to go. So um, I am caffeinated up and I got a couple of bugs in my coffee, but I need the caffeine and I'm not going to throw this coffee out. You guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging. 
Uh, let me know what you thought of this video, if you're still listening to it. Let me know if you want more Bo or Kelly talking like this. I'm very curious. Okay, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, we're also going to be doing a lot more, like, cooking videos because uh, we are going to be freezing a lot of food and getting prepared for stuff like that. So uh, let me know if you're interested in all of the videos. There's a lot of stuff happening.